Thanks so much for joining me. Before we get started, please take a second to click subscribe to my channel to keep up with all of my latest investing and personal finance content. And please check out the link you see on your screen for a message from our sponsor, The Motley Fool, where you can get the top 10 stocks to buy right now. So Tyler, you and I are both heading to Omaha in a few in a couple months for the Berkshire Hathaway meeting. And one of the big reasons we're doing it is because Warren Buffett is 92 years old. Charlie Munger is 99, going to be 100. I believe it's on New Year's Day is his birthday. Um, how many chances are we going to get to see both of them together? And that kind of begs the question, what happens when Warren Buffett is no longer running Berkshire Hathaway? So Buffett might announce his retirement, surprisingly. that could Wouldn't that be neat if we were in the room when that happened? Um, but we already kind of know the succession plan, right? So we know the basics of what's going to happen. We know that um, Greg Abel has essentially been confirmed that he's the next in line to be the CEO. Right now, he's in charge of all the subsidiaries that are not insurance. Um, Ajit Jain is the co-chairman. He would essentially be the Charlie Munger going forward. Right now, he's in chair of, uh, chair of insurance operations. And Ted Weschler and Todd Combs are the two stock pickers. They currently manage about 10% of Berkshire's portfolio. They'll be in charge of the whole thing. Their track record is pretty strong so far. So I, I know... Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the publicly traded side, but with the private businesses, Tyler, I know you have some thoughts on what will change when Warren Buffett's no longer in charge. Yeah, I, I would, I, I kind of wonder, somewhat hope that uh, the concept of it being a wholly owned business means that it's sacrament, sacrosanct and won't ever be, you know, removed or sold off or anything like that. And I think there's going to be a lot of opportunities to, kind of let some things go in the wholly owned portfolio and kind of just focus on its strengths there. You know, there, there's a lot of things that in there that just, you know, they're never going to move the needle for uh, Berkshire Hathaway anymore. You know, furniture stores, new Oriental Trading Company, even like Dairy Queen and McLean, the food distribution company. I don't see them being like... Ugh real big needle movers in the future for them, unless they're going to use them as acquisition vehicles, which I highly doubt. What I would like to see them do is ditch a lot of those things like that and focus the operational portfolio around some core ideas and then use that as a vehicle for acquisitions in the terms of like buying parts. And I think a really good example that we've seen recently is kind of how Berkshire Hathaway Energy operates. Uh, if you remember a few years ago, uh, Berkshire Hathaway Energy acquired kind of all the regulated gas and transmission gas pipelines and even part of an LNG export facility from Dominion Energy. Uh, Dominion was a little bit distressed, probably a little bit uh, too too debt laden and a little too diversified. They wanted to just go to re regulated utilities. So, you know, Berkshire Hathaway came in and scooped those things up for a pretty decent price. I think uh, in a high interest rate environment that we're seeing, I think there's a lot of opportunities in places like utilities, for example, to do that. Um, utilities is a great example. We were talking previously, real estate would be a good roll up option. And, you know, there's even an opportunity for like, you know, for Berkshire Hathaway's like operational stuff, like capricious and cast parts, things like that, to be like a roll up vehicle, similar to like a Heiko or a Transdigium, these serial acquirers in, you know, defense and in industry and things like that, that would make sense uh, for Berkshire Hathaway to do in the future but kind of can't because it's so bogged down and diversified with so many other uh, kind of small and tangential businesses. So let me kind of ask a, a follow-up because I know you know Berkshire Hathaway Energy a lot better than I do. Do you ever see, I know you said there are you know, opportunities to let some things go. Do you ever see Berkshire Hathaway breaking off like a large part of its business into a separate company like Berkshire Hathaway Energy? Like, like essentially the strategy is, you know, you make all these bolt on acquisitions, build a big utility. It's stronger than the sum of its parts. And then you spin it off. Do you ever see something like that? Happen? I mean, that's what basically they've done with Berkshire Hathaway energy, which was basically, it was the regulated utility of Iowa, but it's now, uh, it owns basically all a vast majority of the regulated uh, markets in the Rocky mountains, uh, uh, Nevada, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Oregon and even Northern California between all the subsidiaries that they've acquired, they're, you know, one of the largest utilities in the country and focused a lot there. You, you know, you could see them go in and gobble up things in like Arizona, New Mexico, 
I, basically a lot of it is transmission trying to move power to California. That's like their big, like the big kind of strategic move that Berkshire Hathaway Energy is doing. It's possible. I think you you're more likely to do it in like utilities than railroads, like railroad that you can't get any bigger. There's only four left in the whole country. No, no antitrust lawyers ever going to let those things merge ever again. So, you know, Bur Burlington Northern is going nowhere in terms of, uh, you know, acquisitions, but I could see it in utilities. I could definitely see it in the industrial manufacturing. I, that's one of the ones I'm, I'm surprised that hasn't taken more hold. Yeah, with, with energy, I'd love to see them do something kind of like um, Brookfield did with Brookfield Asset Management, like still own the majority of it, but spin it off and have that part pay a dividend. So, because there's a lot of critics that say, why does it Berkshire pay a dividend that would, you know, satisfy those people um, and, and still kick off some cash to Berkshire Hathaway itself. Uh, but anyway, that's just me talking about my wish list. Uh, on the publicly traded portfolio side, I think that Ted and Todd taking over could ultimately be a net positive. I've said before that I don't think there will ever be a better time to buy Berkshire Hathaway than the day Warren Buffett announces he's retiring or, or when he's no longer in charge. Um, I, the stock is going to initially react very poorly. Buffett is the thesis with Berkshire Hathaway for a lot of investors. Um, the stock will initially react poorly, but with the stock portfolio, I think it's actually going to be a net positive because there's a lot of investments that Buffett admittedly has missed because he doesn't understand well. Ted and Todd understand technology a lot better than Buffett does. They're the ones who initially made the Apple investment, which is dollar-wise the most successful stock investment Berkshire's ever made. Um, they were the ones who initiated that and got it on Warren Buffett's radar, and he dug a little deeper. Um, they added things like Snowflake to the portfolio, which, as far as the, you know, the, the high-growth tech stocks go, is probably best in breed. Um, they have a much fresher approach to investing, and I think that that could end up being a net positive for investor returns in the stock portfolio going forward. That's the biggest thing I think will change. Is you're going to see a lot, and I mean, like you said, there are, like you kind of said with the private businesses, there are big chunks that aren't going to go anywhere. They're not like Buffett won't retire and they'll sell the Coca-Cola investment tomorrow. That's just not going to happen. Um, you know, they're not going to cash out of American Express because Buffett's no longer there. But I do see them kind of over time building a much more kind of tech oriented and innovation oriented portfolio than Buffett has currently allowed them to do. Once again, thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to click subscribe if you don't subscribe to my channel already. And as always, this video is sponsored by The Motley Fool. Be sure to visit www.fool.com slash Frankel to receive the 10, top 10 best stocks to buy now.